Before time itself, the realms have existed. Magical worlds of wonder with incredible creatures, beautiful scenery, and humans harnessing the power of fey magic. We open portals allowing the travel between these realms, but that all changed when the Nightingale portal network failed, stranding realm walkers across the universe. I now have 100 days to survive Nightingale, exploring many different realms and figure out what actually happened. And a big thank you to Inflection Games for sponsoring this video. It was then day one as I was spit out of a failed portal, only to hear a mysterious voice beckoning to me. I had a look behind me to see the portal was truly broken before starting my way down the tunnel, checking if there was anything I could grab but finding nothing. So I kept moving, arriving in a large hall with statues and what I thought was a man in a goat mask. He was clearly wielding magic and gave me some realm cards that I could use to open a portal. I could see the creatures coming from me as I dashed through falling out into the middle of a lush forest where the goat masked man was waiting for me. This was Puck, a mystical fae. He gave me some equipment and told me to find some food to fill my stomach. And I first tried to punch a tree for some wood, but I was going to need an axe. So I collected a bunch of sticks until I found a berry bush which at least helped a little bit. Now I can see how the HUD looks right now, but I had early access to the game. So some things for me may look a little bit different compared to now that the game has fully released. So I ran around collecting sticks and seeing multiple deer around the area and I had a look in my journal to see I had a quest to get rocks, sticks and berries. I grabbed the rocks which were next to me but I still wanted food so I ended up punching a baby deer to kill it only to not have a knife to be able to collect it. So with my rocks and sticks I made up a campfire where I cooked up some of the berries that I was able to munch on for my health to start regenerating as Puck showed himself once again scaring me. He told me I had to leave this realm to get to the next one and I figured I had to just trust him so made my way to the next portal and using Puck's realm card activated dropping me in the middle of a scorching desert. The sun was so incredibly bright so I hid in the shade while chatting again to Puck who said I needed to learn how to survive. I was getting tired though so built a basic stick and leaf tent and a bedroll in order to take a short rest. Feeling slightly more awake, I made up some crude tools like a basic knife, only to be short of resources. So I started to wander around looking for supplies, spotting some trees just walking around. I guess they weren't kidding when they said the realms had weird creatures in it. But I found what I needed to make up a full set of tools as Puck showed himself again. I guess he was teaching me how to survive, even if he did mock my handiwork. But he gave me some more realm cards, so I guess he wasn't all bad. Thus I started to look for the portal avoiding both the sun and the walking trees. When I saw a weird flying robot, a whole herd of them in fact. I whacked the one with my axe only for it to run away, but a different one came back and attacked me. So I ran instead. Eventually finding an oasis with the portal in the middle, I threw my cards into the machine and stepped through the portal. This time emerging in a swamp. Puck warned me the fiends I had seen in what felt like a lifetime ago would be coming for me here. So I was going to need some better food. That's when I spotted a weird aggressive looking rabbit thing. I think I'll call it a ravager. And I began to fight it with my dagger eventually killing two of them allowing me to skin the corpse for the resources giving me some bone, meat and hide. I set up a campfire so I could cook up the meat and ate it. And now this is where I tell you that different foods in this game all have different perks and effects. So the steak I just ate was increasing my maximum health and stamina. As I progress through the realms I'll hope to discover even better foods to increase my chances of survival. For my quest from Puck though, I had to defeat another rabbit thing for its bone and hide, which I used to make a simple poncho. Very stylish and a slightly better gear score than what I had, but I'll explain that later. For my next quest, I was starting to cook up some healing selves only to get jumped by a rabbit that I had to put down. But I was able to get my selves when Puck showed up again to finally let me know he could get me a realm of my own. I first wanted to do some exploring as there was this large oil rig kind of structure where I found some chests that gave me some loot like ingots as well as a magical umbrella. 
These umbrellas were an incredibly useful tool for the Realm Walkers, as they allow you to glide and prevent fall damage like a Realm Walker from legend known as Mary Poppins. So with my umbrella in hand, I started to make my way over to the portal in preparation of heading to my new home. I got to the machine and threw in the carts, only for fiends to step out of the portal blocking my path. So I leapt into battle with my dagger, but I was taking too much damage as I switched to my axe, chopping them down before they were able to do much more. I knew as time went on, stronger and stronger fiends would find me. So I was going to have to prepare as I stepped into the portal to truly start my journey in Nightingale. Your path forward is winding and full of terrors. Save yourself. Survive the realms. And rebuild all that has been lost. Landing in the swamp realm I had chose, Puck was once more waiting for me to tell me here would be safe to set up my base. But before I chose a spot, I went on to investigate this Maku Piku ruin where there were actually some humans working. One of them, Louis, asked me to help complete his structure, and another, Wilhelmina, who for short I'll call Nina, told me she is a columnist for a paper. I can come to her to hear rumors and collect quests and I finished making Louis camp with the resources I had on hand before chatting to Dave who is an essence trader. He sells a variety of useful things for essence that you can get by extracting it from many different items and resources. Since I had completed Louis's job, he actually was now unemployed, so I offered for him to be my new companion then went to explore the monument. And there was a strange magical door preventing me from entering it. And if I wanted to push through the barrier, I needed a higher gear score. For now though, I set off getting jumped by more of those rabbit things. So at least I had more meat and hide. Louis and I set off to start exploring for a place to set up our home. When I saw Louis is quite the avid lumberjack. Even to the point of dropping trees on my head. It reminds me of Kelvin. So we just kept moving, spotting a large stone structure that I'll explore later, as well as some friendly buffalo. I knew once I started building I would need supplies, so I made sure to collect what I could as I kept moving, when more rabbits attacked us, but Louis was a pretty decent fighter and helped me take them out. But I had found a spot that I thought would work for now and placed down my estate carrot. But that made Puck show up again. He told me that if I wanted to be a true realm walker, I was going to need to discover how to make the realm cards myself. That power was hidden in that temple I had tried to enter. So I began to plot out a small structure, filling in the blueprints with the resources. I also set up some storage so I could store my resources. But if I wanted to upgrade, I was going to need to buy some blueprints from the essence trader. For now though, I kept working on my base, building what I can. Chopping trees for wood and grabbing sticks and picking cotton plants for fiber. Working throughout the day to finish the foundations before starting on the walls. Setting up my bedroll as well. And I finally finished the walls in the morning, then set up a staircase so I could get into the box easier. But I wasn't done quite yet as I planned out the build for my second story. Which got built up really quickly, so at least now I had somewhere to sleep, cook and store my belongings. And knowing I had a safe place to retreat, I went off to explore that large stone pillar. Only to find it was a cave that the fiends who I now learnt was called the Pale were waiting in ambush. We sprung into combat with my knife, but with so many of them I needed something bigger. And pulled out my axe to chop them down. Completing the puzzle core, unlocking the Hope Echo. Hope Echoes can be found around the map as some sort of memories of the past realm walkers sharing their knowledge. For this one, I unlocked the hard wall sconce. The rest of the cave was not that big, but it had many resources hidden within it. But my stone pickaxe was not able to break them. So I decided to keep moving forwards, and good thing I did as I spotted more of the pale appearing nearby. I wasn't exactly sure what they wanted, but I'll have to figure out later why they kept attacking me. I ran away from them, finding another strange magical structure with some flashing lights. I ended up touching one only to trigger a trap, summoning in some of the pale who had to be defeated. With them out of the way, I took the time to actually observe what is happening and saw that the statues were blinking in an order. Three, one, two. I decided to copy the rhythm and press the statues in the same order, unlocking the puzzle core, giving me access to the favor of power and the simple hammer echo trapped inside. 
I found another puzzle in the morning and knowing the trick this time I was able to easily replicate the melody. This hope echo taught me how to make a high table lamp. Guess even Realm Walkers had quite the vast wealth of knowledge, so thanks for the lamp I guess. As I kept moving I did see some hippos fighting in the distance with the aggressive rabbits, but I had a goal, as I eventually got to the temple where I was able to buy the blueprint for the simple sewing bench from Dave. And as I was on my way home, I ran into some more hippos and these ones attacked me. Louis and I managed to fight as best we could, finally managing to bring them down to gain some new resources. So at home, I set up a simple tanning station that I was able to turn some of my predator hide into straps. As in Nightingale, there is quite the extensive crafting system. Anything you make has a chance to have different stats based on the base ingredients you use to make it. So this predator hide I was using would increase the max health of any armor I make with it. But I wanted to make a sling bow. This ranged weapon can shoot marbles out of it at an insane speed. I just didn't have any rocks to make into the marbles. Now though, I kept planning more crafting stations to build, and this time one that I was able to use and make myself most of a full set of simple clothing. A small upgrade over what I had, but I'll upgrade this later as for now I just needed to push through that barrier, as at the temple I had to go find its secrets. I was looking real snazzy now though, but I was out of some resources as I went off where I found that herd of buffalo. Louis and I were able to take down for their hide to be tanned into leather for more armor, and I also wanted a ton of marbles for the temple as I had no clue what to expect in there. So collecting a couple piles of rocks, then completed my full set of simple armor getting my gear score to 20. So now I should be able to push through that barrier. I grabbed my marbles and went off back towards the temple. And I managed to snipe a ravager that was in my path dealing crazy damage. I guess the slingbow is stronger than I thought. But in actual fact it was likely just a lucky shot as the rest of them never took anywhere close to the same amount of damage. I finally got to the temple, walking up the steps to the magical door that I was now able to push through. However, inside there was multiple of the pale waiting for me. It was now a fight to push deeper into the temple, using the high ground where I could snipe down the frames. Even using some long range shots in order to keep myself safe, but I was running low on marbles. So I kept fighting forwards, then dropped down to the next level only for some pale and hiding to jump in and attack. I tried to switch to my knife for the close quarters, but there were too many as I switched to my axe and pushed past them to get a second kill. This one sword guy was utterly demolishing me as I sprinted past him so I could breathe, only for him to just narrowly fall off the path I had escaped, narrowly escaping death once again. We finished off the remaining pale when I found a fey chest that I was able to loot, and I saw the sword hand down below me so took the opportunity to fire off some shots but he ran up the stairs where Louis was able to hold him back as I finished him off. Getting to the bottom there was a larger fey contraption, and I just knew once I activate this more of the pale was going to show up, so I wanted to be prepared. I tried setting up a workbench inside the temple but was short of the resources I needed. So I made my way back up and out of the temple where I set up a bench to start crafting me a ton more marbles in anticipation. Once I had a decent supply of marbles, I made my way back into the temple, and fortunately no more pale had arrived yet when I got to the machine to activate the button. But it wasn't the pale that showed up, as a huge floating mech showed up, blasting me with its sword. I ran to gain some distance, turning with my slingbow, firing marbles at the mech as it flew towards me. Its sword attacks were absolutely devastating, knocking me down to low health. But thankfully I had some healing potions from that fey chest I found earlier. I took a chance and sprinted up the stairs to get away from the mech, managing to lose its trail for at least a second. I could see Louis distracting the mech so I began to fire a few marbles at it. I tried to get close, only for it to smash me off my perch, but I found a sneaky spot where I was able to mass fire marbles at it. Shot after shot bringing down its health. Inching closer it was down to a quarter health as I continued to fire my marbles dodging its sword until one final marble finished the door. Giving me the freedom to claim the knowledge of crafting an antiquarian card trapped inside as Puck showed up once again. He told me the antiquarian card will unlock me passage to more challenging realm, where higher tiers of enemies and resources are living. He also told me that there are other realm walkers out there, 
others who can join my discord to tell me about their adventures if they like the video likely the wisest thing puck has said thus far with the new knowledge i headed out of the temple finding a chest i had missed giving me a minor realm card and you get many different realm cards that can be played to both positively and negatively affect the realm you're in but i wanted to travel and explore the new realms but first i wanted better weapons as fights were going to get much harder the deep into the realms i go so i chatted to dave who had some interesting things to sell me but i needed more essence so i collected a mass of fiber bushes that i was able to extract into essence buying all the blueprints i could from dave there were a couple that needed a higher tier of essence so that i can only get once i travel to the new realm so at home i set up an assortment of crafting stations before heading out to smash some rocks to complete them cutting wood into lumber then started the crafting process i made my simple wood axe with sandstone the most basic of stones then crafted up the remaining tools and this axe was already a huge upgrade however i didn't have what i needed for ink to make the card to travel across the realms so I set off in search of gems to mine with my new pick finding some buffalo i brought down with my sling bow as you can never have enough meat then kept moving up the hill where i found some ore nodes finding them allowed me to collect up a bunch of zinc only for more of the pale to attack so i had to take them out but in doing so I actually cleared this tower allowing me to claim the hope echo and loot hidden within i started the next morning by collecting some steaks that had been left as offerings to the fae i mean they weren't eating them before continuing on to get some more steak directly from the source as louis and i took on a herd of buffalo harvesting their meat and hide doing so our bellies would be full as i had some mining to do smashing apart crystal veins for quartz that i planned to make into glass i did have some more ravages that got in the way of my axe as i wanted this loot chest sneakily hidden by the fae and once i got home i did accidentally strip louis down to his underwear my bad louis and once louis was properly clothed again i started to set up my gems to smelt down into glass before setting up an enchanter's focus here you can make different infusions and most importantly realm cards here i needed to make an antiquarian card and a forest card the antiquarian card is kind of like the next tier up from abeyance you get many different tiers but i will get to the more challenging realms later i crafted up the pigments i needed to make a card only to see i hadn't collected enough gems for glass so smashy smashied a couple crystal formations when i came across quite the weird structure it was inhabited by ravagers so i took them out to allow me to explore it when i saw what i thought was another chest but with no way to get to it i was going to have to build my way up climbing up the structures with my pro fortnite building skills only to find it wasn't a chest it was a rock well that's five minutes i won't be getting back and once i got home i set up my gems to smelt and grabbed the other ingredients i needed to make my very first portal cards an antiquarian card and a forest card i just had a new problem now i didn't know where the portal was so i set off in order to find it as i searched i ended up at what appeared to be a massive stone fortress it had another magical gate preventing me entry so this must be another temple that the fae used to protect their stronger realm cards so i just had to keep searching for the portal when i did find the realmic transmuter where you can play minor realm cards to affect the realm you're currently in like more loot more damage or even permanently day but you have to be careful as any card you play will always have a downside as my search continued i did see massive statues fought more pale and even found a favor giving me temporary abilities to jump like fabled realm walker mario and that's when i spotted a spirit a massive ghost-like creature with huge antlers i wasn't able to interact with it so I had to keep moving when i found yet another fey gate this one was slightly weaker than the previous but still too strong for me to push through I ended up heading towards the massive statue and this turned out to be one of the toughest gates to push through so it seems like there's going to be a lot of realms for me to explore finally in the distance i could see the portal to play in my antiquarian and forest cards began to open up the portal only for the pale to break through an attack so i had to fend them off before allowing me to step 
into the portal. On the other side, there was another realm walker waiting for me, and this was Aurelio. I told him that I was trying to get to Nightingale, and he said the best way for me to do that was to find Nelly Bly. But he wouldn't tell me how until I completed his three trials. The first of which was to collect some tier 1 essence, a higher tier of essence than what I already had. So I went off into the realm, finding an old structure infested with a pail, some of which dropped the essence I needed when I defeated them. I then looted the chest inside before grabbing the hope echo on the roof, and this gave me a simple map, listing a few key locations around the realm. But as I began to explore, I came across a large cave. So I started to descend down into it, only for it to be an ambush. Louis and I had to fight for our lives, and Louis even got injured. It was up to me to take them out so I could save Louis. As I began to use my speed and agility to keep my distance as I fired my slingboat before switching to my axe to finish off the final feat. With them all down, I picked up Louis to keep moving into the caverns, sniping down fiends from a distance with my slingboat and headshotting the ones who got too close. There was an assortment of treasures here including a synchronous lotus which caused Puck to show himself again. He told me how this artifact is no simple bauble and actually contains Without a sliver of the realm's magic. So because I had found it, he told me how to make a portal of my own using this artifact. So I'll have to build that later. Now though, there was a portal here that I activated placing me in the middle of a dungeon with no visible way back out. Louis and I made our way deep into the dungeon finding a room that was full of resource rich barrel and an altar keeping the exit locked. I had to find magical runes to activate in order for the barrier to fall so I could collect the essence contained within as the door rose open. The next chamber had many more barrels for me to collect, most of which contained magic fueled ammunition. Once I get a weapon, this would be nice to use, as well as another lotus. I then had to do some parkour in order to finally get to the final room where I claimed another lotus before ascending the stairs as I was pulled out of the realm, landing back at my home. I needed to get back to Aurelio, so ran across the realm to the portal I had to reopen to find Aurelio still waiting for me. I had a chat with him and Aurelio gave me a spyglass. Told me if I was to survive in these realms, I needed to upgrade my equipment both with infusions and essences. I was going to need to do that at home. But for that, I needed some more workbenches. So after making a quick stop by Harley, wait, what happened to Dave? I wasn't sure where Dave went, but Harley sold me a couple blueprints I didn't have yet, which I immediately set up at home, only to then accidentally pull out my spyglass, which pushed my gear score above the threshold, completing a few quests. Now the spyglass while having a high gear score is not exactly the most useful thing in combat. What am I gonna do? Look at the enemies weirdly? I already tried. So I instead spent some tier 1 essence imbuing some of my armor and weapons, pushing me to a solid 27 gear score. Not bad, but I needed more essence if I wanted to go any higher. So in the morning while deciding what to do next, I plotted out my next story of my house before heading out to grab a couple dozen bushes for sticks and fiber, only to end up back at the portal to head out to the antiquarian realm again, as I needed more essence and knew there was a bunch of face structures around the area that I completed some puzzles for to learn their blueprint. I even set up just a small one by one house with a bed so I didn't have to return home to sleep. I continued to complete the face structures challenges throughout the day, clearing out the pail when I ran into a pack of wolves. My axe managed to cleave them apart, giving me a small assortment of tier 1 meat and hide. So now I could make some slightly better gear, but decided I'd rather to just continue to farm the essence and ores around the realm even completing the most complex structure I'd seen yet as the hordes of the pale attacked. With the Fey ruins finally complete, I grabbed the hope echo so I could keep moving throughout the realm, taking on wolves, harvesting fiber and completing the memory puzzles for some much needed loot. But then I arrived at what was marked on the map as the Fey Tower. This structure was huge and as soon as I entered the pale attack, so chop after chop, I smacked down the fiends to take them out, revealing a large power crystal in the center, filled with traps. But I had to ascend, entering a room with the longest memory puzzle I had done yet. 
parkour and many flashing statues. I memorize the pattern before running between each one, using my umbrella to save my ankles. Then activated the final statue, unlocking the essence bundle in the center and opening the door to the ceiling. There were so many of the pale waiting in ambush as I started to fight my way through them all. Caving their heads in with my axe till I finally finished it off, allowing me to collect the lotus hidden in a chest. Here is where I could play more realm cards if I so choose. But having completed the phase challenge, I leaped off the top doing my best Mary Poppins impression. Now that's when I ran into the spider's nest. Multiple giant yellow spiders were guarding the cave, so I began to impale them with my pickaxe, cracking through their buggy shells. Allowing me entrance to the cave where I found some more crystal to break down for resources. Only to stumble into even more spiders, Louie and I worked diligently to take them out one by one, even with their poison eating at my health. What I did not expect, however, was that the spiders were blocking the entrance to a bear's lair. I wanted its hide. So I opened fire with my sling bows to start the fight, then switched to my axe to finish it off, allowing me to skin it for the resources. Having done a fair amount of fey puzzles already, I was feeling confident to continue my path forward, finding puzzle after puzzle that I completed for the hope echoes and fey chests. But not all of it was so easy as the pale kept up its onslaught attacking Louis and I whenever possible, trying to halt our progress. I wanted to keep making progress however, so we were at home in the morning of day 20 where I crafted up my first infusion, applying it to my capelet giving it a plus 5%. I proceeded to spend some time upgrading the rest of my equipment, ending at a solid gear score of 40. Now in order to get to the next tier of realm, I first have to unlock the next card, and that is the astrolabe card. But I had a roof that I started and forgot to finish, so chopped down some trees quickly before finishing off the roof in order to end off the day. With the need to unlock a higher tier of realm, I set off towards the Tower of Power, the Astrolabe Site of Power, and pushed my way through the gate. The inside of this place was ruined as the pale began to spawn in around me. Louis and I took them all out one by one, allowing us a moment to have a look around. There were more trapped on the floor above us, so I pulled out my sling bow to begin taking them out from a distance. Louis had somehow gone up a level, getting himself injured, so I started to shoot the swordsmen only for them to drop down to me. I pulled up my axe to begin fighting, but they hurt, forcing me to escape out of the tower for a chance to heal, but Louis was still inside the tower as I made my way back. One of the swordsmen were alone, so began to attack him as the other showed up. I sprinted out the other side, leading them out to a more open area and switched to my sling bow, keeping my distance as I fired marble after marble, finally bring one down. I made my way into the tower to fight the second one, and now as a one versus one, I was able to dodge and block his attacks, till finally cleaving in the side of his head, defeating him. This wasn't even the most challenging part of the tower yet. I jumped to climb up to the next level before picking up Louis. And there was at least a fey chest here giving me some more potions. I walked up the stairs and many more of the pale spawned in as I began to use the gap in the floor to jump across it dodging the swordsman. One of them followed me outside as I ran out to get a chance to heal and I took him down so I had a moment to breathe. I had to climb back up only for a surprise pale to attack me from behind knocking me back down. He thankfully never followed me allowing me to use the low ground to my advantage as I attacked with my sling bow. I helped Louis up again before continuing up to the final floor of the tower. The Automaton's Control Center. I activated the mechanism causing the fabled Automaton Bishop to spawn with its minions and it started to shoot laser bolts at me as I retreated back down the stairs. The minions were following close behind me so I pulled out my pick to try and cave in their shells. Louis was upstairs distracting the bishop giving me a chance to take down these minions then ran back up the stairs to see the bishop guarding Louis's body. The bishop had surrounded itself with mines so I couldn't get closer as I pulled out my sling bow to begin firing at it. Its blasts were not able to hit me behind this railing so using my cover I continued to fire shot after shot until one more hit brought down the robot. Allowing me to claim the astrolabe card from its cage and there was one more chest in the tower which they had hidden high up on some shelves. With no way for me to get to it, I instead just hacked up this other chest for the wooden hinges. 
Something I highly recommend as the wood you get is quite a high tier. But I wasn't quite ready to head to the astrolabe realm just yet as I went back to my original portal, meeting up with Aurelio, only to realize I had left the synchronous lotus that he wanted at home. So I simply kept exploring the realm looking for a new one as I also needed a good chunk of essence to finish upgrading my gear. Coming across a large stone structure inhabited by wolves I needed to bring down as inside was another fey artifact causing the pile to begin spawning in waves of enemies I now had to fend off. I did have the high ground so for some of them was able to simply blast them with my sling bow. But well, finally they were all cleared out allowing me to get the hope echo. And there was also a memory test which I completed for the power of leaping and a hope echo giving me a charm of bounty. Now charms in this game are actually incredibly powerful. Something I don't realize until much later. So for now I forgot about it as I kept moving through the realm, cleaving through the pale, collecting hope echoes and setting up the occasional bed when I really needed rest, even if the pale wanted to ruin my beauty sleep. But that's when I found a cave. It was full of resources I was able to collect and more pale that I was able to defeat. But with the cave finally cleared so I could grab the hope echo within, also made sure to grab the chest of course. The majority of the day was actually pretty quiet as I found what chests I could smash open and wolves I could tear apart. But as quiet as it was, that didn't last when a massive horde of the pale began to attack. Grenadiers and swordsmen by the dozen charging in to take on Louis and I. But like brothers in arms, we fought for our lives, finally working together in harmony as we brought the last one to its heels. We kept searching the realm, even finding some mystical rocks which required a much higher tier pickaxe if I ever wanted to mine it, and some abandoned human stuff that I was able to steal, I never saw anyone around anyways. At least the memory puzzles were pretty easy and gave me some minor realm cards. It was also great to have Louis following me to carry my stuff, as that's when I came across a small encampment. I made sure to steal all their belongings and break their stuff for resources, as nearby was the owner building a house. I thought it would be cool to be nice and help build her house, chopping down trees for wood in order to complete the build. And now this is where I saw I could recruit her. But I really liked Louie, we had bonded by now, so I just wanted to steal her armor so I could give Louie a nice upgrade. So I temporarily fired Louie and hired Leona with the full intention to rehire Louie, only for Louie to disappear seconds after I did. I guess I'm stuck with Leona now. Louis did at least leave a chest I could destroy for resources, only to then find another abandoned settlement. These were at least a good way to get some loot, but I wanted to help some people. Found a small stronghold with some other realm walkers guarding a machine trying to break into a fey relic. Promised to help them defend it against a horde of pale who attacked, but wave after wave fell to my axe until the machine finally broke through the containment, releasing the hope echo inside. There was also another nearby that I unlocked by finding the ruins. But then in the morning I found someone who I was truly searching for, the essence trader. I bought out his entire stock, every blueprint that I didn't have yet. And with my new knowledge I continued to gather what loot I could even if it meant destroying other stuff when it started to hail, so I had to pull out my umbrella. I had it also at some point found the lotus Aurelio wanted, so I was making my way back to him, finally arriving to show him what I had found, and he told me there wasn't going to be a third trial. Instead that I needed to go find Nelly Bly in a desert herbarium realm, a much more dangerous realm than I had ever been to. I was going to need to fight my way through the weaker realms, honing my skills and increasing my gear before I can get there. And that mission starts at home set up some new storage chests, making use of the wooden hinges I had gotten from all the chests I broke while exploring, then set up a ton of rock marbles to start crafting as marbles are a fantastic early resource you can extract into essence. Then using my enchanter's focus made up an astrolabe card, the next tier of realm for me to visit. I also set up a portal that I could play my cards, so I did first need to gather more wood to make it as well as smelted down some ingots that I plan to craft into wire, and with the portal still under construction I also made sure to set up a brazier, basically an upgraded furnace, which I used to mold ingots into wire so I could complete my portal. I also finished the brazier so now I could do some better metal work, but I had an idea. 
panning some hide for leather to make straps and grabbing some more wood. I fastened together a new slingbow. Gave the slingbow to Leona only to get a notice that it's not good for them to use just yet. Try it for yourself after you've played Nightingale and let me know if it's changed. So with my slingbow idea having not worked, I at least made Leona a better pickaxe so we'd be more prepared for the next realm as the portal roared to life. Stepping through into the harsh, arid climate of an astrolabe desert. I was exhausted from the space time travel, so I spent a bit of time gathering the wood I would need to build up a small shack and bed, only to be slightly short of the sticks and fiber. So I began to make my way to a small grouping of trees where I gathered some fiber as a giant locust attacked. It thankfully didn't follow me as we ran away, so I could finish the bedroll to reset my exhaustion. I want to get a lay of the land, so using my spyglass was able to have a look around, even spotting a massive blimp in the sky. Not seeing much else, began my trip into the desert, sneaking up behind a locust as I brought down my axe. And these things were so tanky, and my axe wasn't piercing their skull. So I switched to my pickaxe to crack through the chitin, killing off the swarm. And there were even more as Leona and I kept moving through, finally spotting a small oasis with some higher tier trees we cut down for the wood. But we had to keep moving, where I did see some of those floating droids I saw in my first few days. These weren't the droids I was looking for, but I did see a straggler smashed open to see what it would drop. Some gears and a gem. Nothing of massive use right now, so I did bring down a second one to double check. And that's when I spotted the largest creature I had seen yet. A massive hulking beast with tusks. This was an elephas. Not something I want to mess with right now. With the sun rising on day 31, my journey through the harsh desert continued until I saw a large structure as I was rounding the corner. Entering it to see this was an old abandoned blimp manufacturing facility. There were a few members of the Calcularia here and they all needed help building some crafting stations. I offered some assistance setting up some of my own, like a tanning station to make the animal fiber I needed. Breaking some boxes and barrels nearby for the wood, only for another giant locust to rear its head and attack. So after cracking down on it with my pick, I kept exploring the blimp plant, eventually finding my way to the roof, where I did see a puzzle core that I had to parkour and jump my way over to it. I'm turning my head to see some Eliphas again and thought, let's try take one down. So I pulled out my slingbow and fired. I missed. Reloading and firing again! It began to chase me, but it was slow, as I made sure to keep my distance and slowly chipped away at its health until it was finally dead. I finished setting up some more crafting stations as I needed to refine my crude resources to complete their stations, but it was slightly short of what I needed. So for now, I wanted to stop by the essence trader, but there was a problem. As I began to climb up the steep mountain, I did stop to mine some ore as I kept jumping and climbing my way up. And using my umbrella to help me ascend, shoving stakes down my throat to regen my food until I finally hit a point I couldn't climb over. I built a stone foundation to get the height I needed, making it to the top of the cliff. And I did find an entrance to a mine shaft only for some of the pale to emerge from it who I had to fend off with my axe. Shoving them so I could get a clean hit to take them out. Then began to descend into the mines. Grabbing the hope echo and smashing open a chest. And hidden behind a wall was a treasure core giving me some essence. Kept moving deeper into the shaft where I was met with more of the pale that I sniped down with my slingbow. And I finished off the last view with my axe so I could claim the lotus and activate the Fey portal. Once the pale that were in it were defeated, I stepped through landing Leona and I in another dungeon. There was a swarm of locusts that we smashed open with our pickaxes, harvesting their shells with my knife. But the locusts weren't the only threat, as more pale were just around the corner. Thankfully, my axe was strong enough to take them out so I could continue looting. With the room fully cleared, I activated the Fey mechanism to begin taking out the pale that came to defend it. There were multiple rounds of increasing difficulty and I did have some close calls, even using a pit to my advantage by shoving them down. Then one final wave of them was able to finish them off, unlocking the final chamber. 
so I could claim the lotus and travel home to my respite point. They had to set up my ore to start smelting, but I was going to be short. That just meant even more nodes needed to be smashed apart with my pickaxe. With plenty of ore and gems in hand, I headed home to begin a huge crafting spree. So much crafting, in fact, that it was already the end of the day by the time I had everything I needed to head back to the astrolabe desert. Running across the dunes, until I finally arrived back at the blimp factory. Placing the blades I had made into the saw table only to then see I had forgotten the carved wood. Yeah, I wasn't planning to come back and finish this, as I wanted to explore more of the desert. Finding more of these automatons, learning that they actually have a purpose here, as it was smashing apart rocks. I stole all of its ore, then made my way to the nearby structure. Clearing out the locust so I could ascend to have a nice vantage point, but I couldn't see much, so kept aimlessly running through the desert, arriving at what ended up like a mini parkour course. Grabbing the chest and the hope echo, but it was from this vantage point that I discovered something truly interesting. The automatons were not only passively harvesting the resources around them, they are also carrying it back to a chest, almost like my pals in Power World. I could then just grab what I wanted from their chest, and it was a really cool mechanic. Nearby, there was also this high tier black rock summoning lightning strikes with no chance of me mining it right now. But I could mine this giant scorpion that attacked us, even if its poison did hurt. So I kept making my way through the desert, finally spotting a massive floating structure. The Fey Tower. If I can complete that, it would reveal every location on my map. But I didn't feel ready for that just yet. What was also here though was Calvin, the essence trader. So I bought out his entire stock. And I went onwards to keep exploring the area where I did see this awesome tree with some red gems sticking out of it that I couldn't mine, as well as another house being built, this time by Tom. He had a large automaton nearby and it was aggressive. I started to fight back, even running to Tom to see if he could help, only to get blasted back as my health pool was shattered down to 20 health and I had to chug a health pot. The owner and I kept fighting the night till finally I was able to bring it down from a distance with my sling bow. Made sure to help Leona back up and for whatever reason there was another person setting up their house. I guess this was a popular realm. So I stole the chest he had left nearby when he wasn't looking and there was also another parkour treasure core I climbed up and I could just see the Fey Tower looming menacingly. Running up to it as the doors began to open, and inside I took out the pail that were guarding the entrance so I could make my way up the stairs, only to be entering a maze full of traps and mines. I carefully made my way through the tower until I got to the ceiling, and a dozen pails stood between me and claiming the tower, so fighting was my axe to bring them down, but I was taking too much damage, and had to chug a healing potion before I could finish them off and claim the hope echo. I had a look at my map and saw something interesting that I planned to make my way towards, running across the desert, fighting off the locusts and exploring some abandoned towers. Capturing a few hope echoes along the way and exploring the points of interest along my journey to my destination. I could see it in the distance in what was an absolutely spectacular view, but I was finally getting close. Sending up the long stairs, leaping up to reveal a very modern library with a man waiting for me at the end. This was Victor Frankenstein, and he knew Nelly Bly. He had been here studying the automatons, and he told me how he was trying to research a way to get some form of oil from an automaton without deactivating it, and offered to share it with me if I brought him a large assortment of loot from the pail. Now this oil would turn out to be incredibly important later on, but with how daunting that list seemed, it is not something I focus on till later. But I did take the opportunity to fight some more of the pale who spawned nearby. With nothing else to gain from the desert, I headed home to plot out the blueprints I had bought from the essence trader. And they were going to require a ton of stuff to craft. So much so that I even just carried my entire storage system to fill what I could, simply to be able to work out what I still needed. Melting down ore into ingots, ingots into plates, and then plates into blades. So I finally completed the refined saw table I needed. So hopefully now, once I get the resources, I can craft myself some stronger tools and equipment. Now with that goal in mind, I saw I had some nice stone which I was able to use to make myself a slightly better axe. See in Nightingale, every resource you use has different stats. So the better the resource you use, in this case nice instead of sandstone, 
it made me an axe with slightly higher durability. So if I want something even stronger, I have to find even stronger resources. But feeling like I needed higher tier resources, I needed to go to a higher tier of realm. Setting up a portal before heading north to take on the Provisioner Tower. Pushing through the gate with axe in hand when the first of the pale spawned in to meet me. I began to hack and slash at the swordsman but knew I needed to focus on the wizard before finishing him off. Climbing up the tower only to see the biggest dude ever carrying a massive war. I made sure to take out the weaker ones first as I dodged his attack. Taking advantage of his slow speed until he got stuck on a rock as a fireball blasted me. But then the big guy dropped his hammer and charged straight at me. I sprinted out of the gate with him chasing me before he turned to go back and I took my chance. He had more speed and strength than me, but I dodged around him with my axe, finally hitting the killing blow, taking him down. I headed back into the tower as now there was a pyromaniac to deal with, but he kept setting me alight. I eventually just ran straight at him to attack, only for his pack to explode, knocking me away. This tower was going to be the toughest I had done yet. Climbing up the long wooden ramps until I was forced to fight again, focusing on the swordsman before turning back to the pyro. Finally knocking him up against the wall to finish him off as his pack exploded igniting us once more. I had been chugging healing potions like crazy and we weren't even at the final room yet. More of the pale stood between us as we fought our way up using gaps in the path to jump across for safety and leaping into combat where I could, chugging potions like they were juice as a pyro exploded, almost knocking Leona completely off the tower. The final few pale were all that were left, and Leona was injured, so I took out the swordsman to let me help her up before moving to bring down the pyro. Finally allowing us entry to the final room of the Autumn Maiden. Pressing the button, the knight appeared as it first attacked with a laser beam. I dodged around the corner before running back in with my pick to begin hacking at the men. It threw slash after slash as I dodged what I could and chugged potions for what I couldn't, smashing at its core with my pickaxe to deal the most damage possible, finally destroying the mech so I could claim the provisioner card that was trapped within it. Leaping off the tower there were a pale waiting in ambush but after that tower they went down like it was nothing. So I stopped by the Marku temple on my way to see we now had Simon and Nina had a quest for me. She wanted me to find a lawman hidden in one of the provisioner realms. So great timing if you ask me. I started out in the morning by making the cards that I was going to need. Stepping up to the portal and opening my first gate to a provisioner realm. While I was worrying to life, I did grab some marbles I had crafted to extract into essence to keep my gear well repaired and jumped into the portal. Arriving in a lush purple grass forest where it immediately started raining. Great. I was in the Netherlands. So with umbrella in hand, I headed to the nearby factory where there were a couple people from the company waiting to extract the Hope Echo from a treasure core with a guy named Norman who I took a liking to. So after taking away Leona's stuff, I hired Norman, then chatted to Ethel to start breaking into the Hope Echo, but that of course attracted the Pale who began to siege our stronghold. What I didn't quite expect was how much tougher the Pale were in this new realm, but we managed to survive the first wave as two of the bruisers with their huge mauls bust through our machine and turned onto us. I desperately fought them off, only for them to vanish with their task now completed. Without the resources I needed to repair the device, I headed out into the realm to begin my explorations. Almost immediately finding the Fey Tower within the realm, as well as some locals working on their houses. But I first had to bring down some pink bears with my axe to be able to harvest their hide. And the houses were owned by Willie and William, the essence trader. They did have a boar problem I helped handle before having a look what William had for sale and he had like no stock. I guess there's another essence trader somewhere in the realm. Thankfully turns out he had actually parked his carriage nearby. It just had another bear I had to prevent jumping me as well as a bunch of these moose spirits around. But I still couldn't even touch them. So just chatted to Horus who sold me some blueprints like a grindstone and the refined tanning station. Then as I was leaving I spotted something rather peculiar. A mangled yellow boar. And this was a fabled boar. 
Mog of the Erymanthian Plain? No idea if I said that right. But as soon as I killed it, Puck showed up again. He told me how these fables are the creation of some of the lesser fae. Harvesting to find the hide was like an improved version of regular boar hide. But then as I was fighting a bear nearby, the rain turned to hail as I had to pull out my umbrella to keep me safe. One of the spirits clearly didn't like the hail as it roared out nearby. But then I started to make my way towards the Fey Tower, instead finding a small abandoned settlement where I did complete a hope echo and broke into their houses looking for loot. Cooked up some more food on their fire only for Puck to show up again and start to mock my cooking skills. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm not starting to not like this guy. I made sure to ransack their chests, then found some more of that bismuthy endgame metal, which I still just couldn't touch. But I did find ore that I could, as well as some more of the Gneiss? 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 You tell me how to say it in the comments. Which I harvested a bunch of, before Umbrella shooting down to land on the ceiling of a house so I could walk up to the Fey Tower entering its doors. The Pale Guardian it were tough, but I was becoming proficient with my axe as I chopped them down one by one. Then as I entered the next floor to see my worst nightmare. Parkour. I could not for the life of me figure out this room. Jumping around, shooting things, I was stumped. So I decided to do what is always the best strategy. I chose to cheese it. Building up some stone foundations, building up a staircase. What was the correct answer? No idea. But it worked as I got to the rooftop staircase, collecting the essence bundle and heading up where I could take down the pail. And damn, these guys were tough, bringing me down to 11 health as I jumped off the platform to get a chance to heal. Climbing back up as I finished off the remaining dudes, completing the Fey Tower. There was a bear waiting below the tower as I landed with my umbrella, but then kept moving to find another group of the company. So I agreed to try and help them defend the machine, only for a bruiser to show up and immediately smash it. So I abandoned them to it as another group of the pale appeared nearby. I had to run. But as I tried to run, the pail followed me everywhere I went. No matter where I looked, they were there. As I kept running through the forest, I had to stand my ground and fight. But I was taking so much damage and spotted someone nearby. So I sprinted over to them as the pail followed me. I tried taking them out with my axes. One final swipe knocked me down, taking me out. I thought I was dead. As a card flashed before my eyes. Memento Mori. The Latin phrase for remember, you must die. But as I came to, who was waiting for me, if not for Puck? He told me about how he had tasked the Zephyr with rescuing my body from death. Of course, the but Zephyr that has is a consequence. Only when I resurrect, I'd be weak and have none of my stuff, so I'd have to retrieve it from my point of death. Running back to it, an umbrella jumping off the cliff till I was able to get it back. Then turned to chat to the gentleman who must have cleared out all the pale. And this was Bass Reeves, the lawman that Nina was looking for. Chatting to him, he told me how he was looking for a fugitive somewhere in the realms and I wanted to help. But he said I needed to prove myself first and that was by getting some headshots and heart shots. I thought this was going to be easy, only to miss my first shot. And the second shot was neither in the head or the heart. But I kept stalking the deer missing shots until I managed to get close and fired hitting the perfect heart shot. That was quicker than I thought. So I kept hunting the deer while Norman hunted the rocks, firing shots at boars, scoring a few headshots, and shot after shot was fired, racking up hits, until I found what can only be described as a nature altar. Oh boy, it was not what I expected. I placed a mushroom into it which chose to reject as the tree began to rise up and out of the ground. I had angered an Iotan. I started to hack at it with my axe, breaking down its wall as the fight was on. Hack after hack, potions were chugging, chopping at the tree aiming to bring it down until one final swing took it out. I harvested it, gaining some of its wood and the Jotun heart, a high tier of form of resources that I could use to make some better gear. And in the morning, the hail started once more, so with my umbrella ran over to a shelter, where I was able to hide out for the day until the hail stopped, so I could head out to continue hunting the deer, even missing some baby deer, bears, and deer that were right in front of me. But then I saw a boar walking in the distance to start stalking towards it, 
and fired getting the final hard shot I needed. And I'll just had to head back to Bass Reeves, umbrella leaping down the cliff, finally getting back to him. He let me know that the person he was hunting down had stolen some designs from a Calcularia facility, a member of the 40 Elephant. He also said he would track me down if he ever needed more help. I just simply headed home for the day. I started out the morning by extracting some of my tier 1 essence, as all the essence is used to repair my armor and tools. Grinding down the better essence is a great way to repair your armor once you get a surplus of it. But I needed to let Nina know I had found the lawman, so made my way back to the temple, giving her most of the information completing the quest for some rewards. Then I was doing some more exploring only to fall off a cliff and sprain my ankle. Good to know I need to be more careful. I made the decision to then just stay at home while it healed and use some of my Jotun wood to make a better sling bow, which had a better crit chance and more durability. I was pretty happy with the upgrade, until I saw I had at some point learned how to make a Lancaster pistol. First step was to set up a refined workbench, but the recipe wasn't there. And this is where I introduce you to augmentations. Now augmentations are used to buff up your workstations, and for the pistol I needed the simple saddle rack to unlock the cowboy augmentation. Then basically the whole day was spent cutting wood into lumber using some Jotun wood and lacanus ingots to make a refined wood axe, giving me a huge upgrade. Even one-shotting a hippo that attacked me while chopping down some trees. And I set up a toolbox augmentation, cutting some leather into straps, doing a long line of crafting until finally I had made myself the Lancaster pistol. A four-barreled handgun that was going to be incredibly powerful as I loaded some bullets into it. Also made myself a new pickaxe, making sure to imbue everything with essence, before heading off to test them out. And it was a massive upgrade as a herd of buffalo fell like they were nothing. But I was going to need these upgrades, as next I plan to unlock the Herbarium Realm. So I set off to start making my way towards the Herbarium Tower, when I spotted a pirate ship high up on a rock. So I definitely want to check it out, and had a pretty cheeky idea on how to do so. First though, I had to take out the pail using my new pistol, and headshotting the few around just felt so good. Then walking around the pirate ship mountain, I did see a fey gate. But I wouldn't be using this, as I climbed the rock nearby, running, jumping, and umbrella gliding just to be short. I set up some stone foundations to try again, and this time made it onto the rock. It was now a simple matter of climbing up the rocks, and I could see the pail wandering around within. This was the gloom tower the tier above the herbarium which i hadn't done quite yet but i was feeling adventurous as i popped shots into the pale who had no clue i was here moving deeper up the tower finding some pale the likes of which i had never seen before and another bruiser but this one looked different he was immune to all of my attacks and i looked to see it was still a normal bound bruiser but i couldn't just damage the fiend so I revived Norman as we needed to get the heck out of here as I jumped off the tower. Only to turn and see Norman hadn't followed me. There was no way for me to get back up there right now, so I just had to hope Norman survived until I could. And there were some hippos I had to take out and was making my way home when I found Louie. He was waiting at the original Fey portal, but I couldn't just abandon Norman. I needed to go back for him, but if I was to get stronger, I first had to do the Herbarium Realm. Entering the tower, pistol in hand, popping shots at the pale above me. But they were tough. With all the pale dead, I climbed the final flight of stairs to arrive at the Automaton's arena. Collecting a few things around the arena before activating the mechanism as the night phased into existence. Using my pistol, I was able to keep my distance as I jumped around the arena, firing shots at the night. Being sure to hit its core for the extra damage, eventually taking it out. I just now had to deal with the minions with my pick, taking care to not let them hit me as I smashed at their shells till they were destroyed. Allowing me to collect the card when Puck showed up again. He didn't have anything of interest to share today, but we will continue to see a lot of him, I guess. And in the morning, I made up everything I needed for the Herbarium cards, setting up some lamps so I could actually see what I was doing, 
then set the cards into the portal so that it could word to life as I was off to a herbarium realm. Landing in the swamp and Norman was here. I had no clue how he got out of the tower, but he did let me know he survived because he was subbed to the channel. Guess it makes him like 15% better or something. But we couldn't chat now as I needed to find some higher tier resources to make better armor. Only to then come across a large abandoned structure with the longest memory puzzle I had seen yet. With statues all around. Not only did I need to find and remember the locations of seven of the musical nodes, I'd have to parkour. If only there was a way I could from a distance hit these statues to activate them. So after spending an absurd amount of time simply waiting to see where all the nodes were, I finally found where they all were and activated them to claim the Hope Echo. So with that done I wanted to do something mindless and that was fighting the Pale. Best place for that was the Fey Tower. Except the Pale that spawned was deadlier than I had seen. A dual sword wielding ninja kind of like Illidan, but it thought bringing swords to a gunfight was pretty effective. So I made my way up the staircase with the dead to find another parkour memory puzzle. Great. Fortunately these were all easily found and activated to complete the room, and the pair on the roof were waiting for me. I opened the fight with my pistol to start taking them down, killing off a couple before all that was left was another Illidan guy who I took out with my pistol. Completing the Fey Tower. Once I left the tower I continued my quest for finding resources to make some equipment. Finding a deadly swamp spider that kept poisoning me as I took it out. The day continued fighting hippos when I spotted a fabled fish goat. Now that could give me some good hide, so I made it my mission to hunt it down when I saw this weird swamp giant thing. It's summoning and offering Alta right in front of me and remembering the Yotan I fought, I didn't want to take the risk and fired at the giant, dodging her attacks as I kept firing and shot after shot until I took its life as it burst into a mass of water. But that wasn't the end, as another bigger giant appeared and started attacking. I ran away so I could reload and start fighting the giant and it took many shots of lead and gunpowder. Dodging the giants as I kept shooting until finally I got it low enough for one final shot to take it out. And I continued to hunt down the fish goat finding some regular ones but I wanted the fabled version. Scouting out the area with my spyglass only to then see the essence trader. I did take a moment to buy out his entire stock including a new set of armor. Once I get the resources I needed I planned to make a new set. But that meant I just had to keep hunting the fish goat. Sprinting across the marshlands but it was just so fast and I was running low on ammunition. I didn't make sure to stop by the hope echoes I saw to claim them. But no matter how long I hunted I couldn't catch the fish goat. So at least I was able to catch the pail that I was able to cleave apart with my axe. But with no ammo I just headed home. Set up some new chests to store my new stuff. Then decided to check what I had collected so far for Victor. Then day 58 ended up being a bit slow. So I did stop by the provisioner forest to hunt down some bears, defeat some fabled boars and chop down a ton of trees. All so I could set up some new workbenches I was going to need for my clothing. Tanning hide into leather and setting up a sawhorse as another augmentation. As well as a bonfire to cook up a ton of meat so I'd have a nice healthy supply before heading back to the herbarium swamp to try once again to hunt down the fabled fish goat now that I was re-equipped. I could see in my spyglass the fabled fish goat was running through the swamp. I wanted its hide. So I began to trudge through the waters of the swamp chasing it down, bending off spiders, taking down hippos and bending off the pale attacks. Until the day ended with me finding another memory puzzle. Completing it after some exhausting parkour. Then headed off where I did need to fight some more of the pale. Then continue to hunt down this fish goat fighting the hippo in the way. A normal fish goat and was completing another memory puzzle. Breaking through the walls only to accidentally hit one of the puzzle pieces. Now up until now I didn't know you could just hit them. 
I thought you had to get up to them and activate them. So this gave me a fantastic idea to try later at a more difficult one. Since I accidentally hit the first one, I didn't actually know the order, so ended up messing it up, causing a ton of the pale to spawn in that I had to deal with. Now this is where I had a great idea. This was actually suggested to be by Chaotic, but it's my idea now. It was to place an augmentation next to each puzzle piece, so you don't have to remember when each note plays, then simply went and whacked each piece to complete the puzzle. And I was then clearing out a pale infested mine, only to spot something strange walking in the distance, named a harpy. But it looked like a woman in a robe, until I got closer to see it was a terrifying creature that immediately attacked Norman, so I leaped into battle to take it out. It dealt so much damage that even with the dead I had to chug a healing potion. Having failed in trying to hunt down the fabled fish goat, I spent the next day crafting myself an entirely new set of clothes, a set of trapper clothing, and giving my old set to Norman. Finally completing the full set in the morning, and I just looked dashing. I also chose to spend some time looking into the infusions, giving my tools some great upgrades. I plan to add some magical enchantments later, but I didn't quite know how to just yet. With my upgrades I needed just a few more resources, so went back to the forest realm I was in a couple days ago to hunt down bears and fabled boars for their hides. Finding an old mine shaft, I started to fight my way down, taking out the pail within, collecting the chests scattered in the area, and with the resources from the chest I repaired the extraction device the company had been using to break into this hope echo which I wasn't able to defend from the bruises a couple days ago, and fighting off the bears that were sieging them so we could start to clear out the hordes of the pale attacking to prevent us breaking into the Hope Echo. With the hordes defeated, I could collect the Hope Echo, then continued my hunt for fabled boars. I was clearing out the multiple mine shafts, and this one even had a dungeon in the bottom, so made my way into it, fighting through the waves of pale, including the sorcerers and bruises hidden within it. My axe was tearing through them like they were butter. Not sure who uses an axe for butter, but it was pretty effective allowing me to get to the extraction device. Bolt it up, cut down the pail, making it all the way to the end of the dungeon to claim the essence and escape through the portal as the day came to an end. But I needed to start progressing. I had to find Nelly Bly. So closed off the Swamp Herbarium portal, severing my connection to that realm as I needed the portal machine. Crafting the new cards I needed and opened the connection to a brand new world. Stepping through the portal into a lush orange herbarium forest, I began to sneak my way through the realm in search of Nelly and resources. And I was right next to the Fey Tower on day 69. Nice. Clearing out the nearby abandoned ruins filled with the pale. Dealing with the deadly poisonous purple spiders that inhabited this realm. When I found another Eotan altar, and this one got chopped down like it was nothing. The gear upgrades I had made myself were doing work, but I knew I wouldn't feel powerful forever, as I still planned to go through to the harder realms. But while I was here, I helped out the locals to break into the hope echoes they were trying to extract, chopping down hordes of the pale attacking, then squishing the dozen or so spiders I came across. Finding the runes to unlock more of the hope echoes, and clearing out more spiders and Eotan. Gathering all the resources which I could still use to make more equipment, then headed over to the Fey Tower to begin clearing it up, finally arriving at the parkour memory puzzle. This is where I put my master plan into action. See, you don't actually need to jump to each node in order to activate them. I could stand in the bottom here and shoot them with my pistol in order to hit them. So if you hate parkour like me, this makes it much easier. So I could just head up to the ceiling to clear out the remaining pails, completing the Fey Tower. I then had to look to see where Nelly was on the map, then glanced at my journal to see she was actually in a desert herbarium realm. Whoops, I guess I should have paid more attention. But while I was here I wanted to see what I could gather anyways, so I suppose this trip would not be an entire waste. After I got home with the resources I wanted, I used some of them to set up a new portal in preparation before making use of some charms I had found. Now charms are amazing. They can be applied to your gear giving them unique bonuses, such as Charm of the Terrifier, which I applied to my gloves. This charm causes me to gain health when I land a hit on an enemy's weak point. 
so hopefully this makes it much easier for me to stay healthy. But I also wanted to make some more bullets. So the entirety of day 72 was spent smashing my pick against some ore nodes for resources. Until I was feeling equipped enough to open a new portal and step through it to land in the harsh arid climate of the herbarium desert. I was immediately under attack by a giant scorpion I killed with my pistol. Scouting around when I found a memory puzzle. Now wow am I glad I figured out you could hit the puzzle pieces from a distance. As how the heck was I going to get up there? I quickly completed the one puzzle before finding another where the puzzle pieces were so high up there was no way I would ever be able to get to them. But thankfully I was able to just shoot them. Then as I was busy with another, I stumbled upon a fabled knight. It started off by summoning minions while I ran in with my pickaxe to try and take it out. But taking too much damage, I had to back off and heal, before running back in to finish it off only for the minions to take me out, knocking me out cold. Pax Zephyr kept me alive once again, but I had to run back to retrieve my stuff. So I could keep searching through the desert looking for Nelly Bly, finding abandoned outposts, Hope Echo Shrines, and finally, the Fey Tower. I cleared out the Pale Guards in the entrance, then built up a staircase to skip the parkour once again so I could ascend to the ceiling and chop down the remaining Pale. But now this is where things get interesting. As I activated some cards in the Realm Ectron Muter, causing ripples of energy to break out across the realm. I had played two cards, one that increased my chance of finding essence while fighting and a second that affected how much damage some of my weapons are dealing, both of which came incredibly handy as I spotted some more people defending another Hope Echo, and I helped to clear out the invading pale, but it was getting dark and I hadn't yet found Nelly. So running through the desert dunes taking on pale infested shelters, giant scorpions, all while the pale had begun to spawn all through the realm as I made my way along. I also had some automated knights I took out just barely chugging health potions to keep me alive. But the pale weren't the only problem as I found my first giant beetle who attacked. Fortunately, my pickaxe was still able to crack through their shells and they were even infesting these caverns built into the mountain. I couldn't stop now though as I kept fighting my way through the pale, all spawning while searching for a way up to where I thought Nelly had set up camp. I just had to hope I was right though as I began trying to ascend my way up the sheer cliff face of their mountain, finally getting to a point where I could go no further but I had the best idea. Placing down foundations and ramps, climbing them up with stone, harvesting more of what I needed to continue my construction upwards where some pale were waiting for me. If they were here, I had to be on the right track, finally making it to the top to see quite the extensive camp. And standing over a table in the middle of it, there she was, Nellie Bly. She told me how Nightingale was completely inaccessible. All these days for nothing. However, there was hope. She told me of a realm known as the Watch, a permanent realm that they were trying to re-establish connection to, but they had a huge problem. They were short of three components, a reliable heat source, combustion fluid, and an attunement conductor. All three they knew what they needed, but didn't have the strength to get it. So I guess it's up to me to help them and get to the Watch. In order to find all these items, I had to look in Hunt Realms, a realm that was two tiers above Herbarium. So this was going to be tough. I finished chatting to Nelly to find Puck waiting oh, for me, I'll and he told me I should help Nelly with her quest, the as there was more trouble brewing, something and bigger than just the I pale. Tell. I had no choice to believe him, as I couldn't break through the gate set up to prevent accessing the portal. And one of the ingredients I needed was automaton oil, which I can get from a fabled automaton bishop. Now, this must have been what the guy that I found, Victor, was looking for, so at least I don't have to help him anymore. So I set off into the desert scouting out the groups of automates and coming across an automate knight. I took him on and boy was this guy tough. I tried cracking through his shell only to end up spraining my hand as I tried to block. So after I finally knocked it out with my pistol, I chose to just head home as I wasn't going to be able to fight what I need to like this. At home I applied some healing self to cure my arm. It's magical healing self, okay? But I knew I was going to need extra firepower. I was going to need magic. So after setting up a masonry bench that I used to craft up some seals as I was using them to make enchantments. Now enchantments are purely for your weapons and tools 
as you're imbuing them with fey magic. The first enchantment I made was an illumination one. Admittedly, it was a mistake as I was trying to make something else, but this enchantment allows you to shoot orbs of light and of course Puck had to show himself again to call me a baby for using magic. But I felt good. But light orbs weren't cutting it, as I made myself the Hermetic Flame, a powerful spell imbuing my axe with fire setting anything I hit ablaze. I also imbued my pickaxe with a powerful healing spell that I could use to recover from damage I take during a fight. And with my new abilities, I headed out where I did test my axe versus some hippos. But there was a more challenging approach on the horizon. I cooked up a ton of food, including cooking Norman since he kept standing on the fire. As well as crafted up a ton more bullets for my pistol. And headed off to make my way to the hunt tower. Entering the structure, I began my ascent up the wooden ramps. Axe in hand as I began to cleave through the initial enemies. Cutting them down one by one. Only to get into a rough situation, so ignited my axe to finish off the pale attacker. I used my pickaxe to heal myself back to full. Then grabbed my axe to keep fighting my way through, only to get blown back by a pyro, knocking me almost off the tower. But I was able to heal. This tower was going to be tough, but using magic to ignite my axe, I kept fighting my way through. It was a final short walk to get to the top of the tower, making sure to ignite my axe as I entered the chamber and activated the device. I ran in to start attacking the knight, only to get ignited in flames myself, so backed off to heal with my pickaxe. I need to notice there wasn't just one automaton. There was two. I backed out to try and heal, only for the knight to chase me, whacking me away, kicking me straight out of the tower, plunging me into free fall. I was so glad I had the umbrella there, as surely I would have died, but I wasn't giving up now. Ascending all the way back up to find the automatons had deactivated, thinking I was dead. But this time, I had a new strategy. Making sure to keep my distance from the knight as I began to sprint around the arena, firing my pistol to deal damage empowering my pickaxe to heal and dodging what I could as the fight went on. The night was getting low until it chased me down the ramp, opening itself up to be destroyed. The bishop had now taken its place blocking the entrance to the arena, but I had the low ground, as I was able to efficiently shoot it down, destroying it to claim the card as my prize. With the card in hand, I leaped off the tower to head home, where I set up some more augmentations, cutting up wood into lumber, in order to make myself a better umbrella. With how much this thing had saved me, I was happy to upgrade it. However, cursed with the knowledge that I would be needing to explore many hunt realms to gather the components for Nelly, so I set up three portals that I would be needing, for watching one open to step through it into the forest hunt realm, as I aimed to hunt down the Elder Eoten. So started my adventure into the realm, only for a pack of wolves to stand in my way, and my gosh were creatures so much stronger in this realm. Even finding some weird demon-like creatures that just kept leaping at me, so I had to bring them down before they took me out instead. And I kept searching in the morning, fighting off wolves, and harvested their hide to be tanned, when I came across the largest camp of the Pale yet. We dropped down to start fighting them to take them out, but it was tough. So I quietly made my way into the cave to claim one of the chests when I saw more of the pales searching for me on their way out of the cave. I followed them out leaping into battle with my flaming axe to attack the bruiser. But the pyro's attacks were starting to hurt so I had to run away in order to heal before taking down the bruiser. But I took too much damage and ran off to find the essence trader to buy off the upgrades. But since I'd skipped the gloom realm I did not have all the upgrades I needed. So this realm was going to be tougher than I expected. However, I kept fighting as hard as I could only for a massive Eoten to spawn right next to me. I had stumbled into the Elder, so ignited my axe to start fighting it in order to bring it down. Setting it alight with my axe, making sure to run around it to avoid as much damage as I could, before sprinting in to keep it burning with my axe. Slowly but surely, I chopped and hacked at the tree until finally I killed it. But that wasn't the actual Elder, as I never got the heart from it. So my adventure continued roaming through the realm, taking out the many pale found within it. Gliding across with my umbrella, almost dying to the pale, but at least my pickaxe kept me alive. I knew I needed an upgrade, so I had to go back to get to the gloom realms, 
Arriving home to head over to the Gloom Tower using my standard entry point of jumping in from the side, fighting all the way up the tower, even beating down the bruiser that prevented me passing through the first time I was here. Taking down the last few guards to arrive at the Automaton Terminal and summoning in the Fabled Knights to start hacking at them as I was out of bullets, only to get completely yeeted off the mountain, barely saving myself with my umbrella once more. So after crafting a couple dozen more bullets as I was going to need them, I made my way back to the tower finding Norman along the way who had gotten flung off the tower by the bruiser. But I finally got to the top to summon in the fabled automated knights once again. I opened fire immediately then made sure to keep my distance as I danced around the arena with pistol and umbrella in hand. We quickly took out one of the mechs before starting with the other only for Norman to get absolutely thrown off the edge with me following him soon after but I barely pulled myself back into the tower thanks to my umbrella. So I started to head back up only to be caught halfway by the night to continue the fight. I dodged and dodged around the ship interior while firing every shot I could to destroy the fabled knight. With them defeated I was able to claim the card to let the portal whirr to life to begin my journey into the desert gloom realm. Exploring around I completed some fey puzzles, fought off some of the pale and hunted down the local wildlife, even if their pack attacked in response, so I took them out too. Running across the entire desert to get to Jess, the essence trader, buying myself the refined upgrade bench. This would be the strongest upgrade I could get right now. And as I set it up once I got home to begin imbuing all my tools, equipment and armor with tier 2 essence. A massive upgrade and something that was desperately needed if I was going to be able to fight and defeat all three apex monsters I needed to for Nelly Bly. With my axe ignited I headed back to the forest realm to continue the hunt for the elder Eoten. Taking down some regular Eoten, bears and fabled spiders and wolves only to learn the spirits would actually revive any creatures corpses in the area. Just glad it never revived the Eoten I took down soon after. But all the while my hunt continued I made sure to help those in need, fighting off the pale attacking them and my upgraded axe was cleaving apart the bruises while they beat them with their picks. But no matter how much I searched I couldn't find this damned elder Eoten. Even resorting to just whacking random trees with my axe as I ran past to make sure they weren't Eoten. And I found some more halt Eoten on day 90 but as large as these were they were not the elder. I did have to clear out more pale caves searching high and low, taking every vantage point I could in search of this tree. And my search got so desperate that I was even shooting at the trees and running through hail, diving off cliffs with my umbrella only to sprain my ankle. Desperately searching everywhere, I was running out of time. As even once I find the Eoten there are still two more apex creatures I would have to find. But then through a stroke of luck I spotted a name in my spark loss. The Elder Eoten, advancing towards it as it burst from the ground while I ignited my axe. The fight was on. And with the Elder Eoten defeated I harvested its heart. I had no time to waste when Puck stopped me on my way to the portal. He gave me word that there were whispers of the Winter Court. A once banished realm was starting to awake. It didn't sound good, but I had other priorities. As I got home to immediately enter the Desert Hunt realm, I just had to hope I could find the Sun Giant, as for all I know it could take days. Days I didn't have. I had to search as, oh, I found it in two minutes. But this fight was going to be tough. With how strong the Elder Eoten was, I could only imagine the power that the Sun Giant possesses. Okay, well, that was easier than I expected. 
but with the giant dead, I grabbed the ingot as Puck arrived again. She told me how Bearer, a face bird that dislikes mankind, was leading the rise of the Winter Court. I guess it was as important as ever that I finish helping Nelly by finding the final apex creature, a fabled bishop for its fluid. I found a knight that I easily defeated as soon after I found the bishop, guarding a fighter with my pickaxe in order to crack through the metal armor. But there were so many dangers around as I began to sprint to escape them, switching to my pistol to finish off the bishop, giving me the chance to grab the fluid and take down the remaining foes. And Puck was back and let me know the only safe place from Bearer was Nightingale. So somehow through the watch, I would have to find my way there. But all that was left for me to do now was to get these components to Nelly. And running through the desert herbarium realm, ascending the steep cliffs to get to Nelly's camp where I handed over all three components she needed. She gave me the privilege of taking the first steps as I pushed through the gate, only to find Puck waiting for me at the portal. I won't dare set foot within the watch, but fret not. This isn't the last you'll see of Robin. I'll call when the time is nigh to fulfill your end of the bargain. As per our agreement, each kindness given must beget an equal one in turn. I have given many. And what value can be placed upon one's own mortal coil? I tried to protest, Doubtless plead, and scream, but all had no effect. Puck's magic was forcing me to do his bidding, and I had unintentionally made a deal I couldn't afford. Puck was going to come back and require me to do something for him in Nightingale, and I was not so sure I would like what it was, but I'd have to worry about him in another journey as I jumped into the portal, landing me in a vast structure where I could really see another realm walker, Kitari, running around. This was the Watch, a place where all realm walkers can meet up with each other and share tales of their journey. There were also some portals that I learnt were the major vaults. They housed a magical being known as Yana. A being that inhabits the form of many different powerful foes. Something we'll have to keep fighting to prevent taking over our world. And I made my way to introduce myself to the Quartermain, a man named Alan, who tasked me with introducing myself to the people around the watch. But I wanted to fight, as I jumped into one of the major vaults, and the pale within here was so incredibly tough, forcing me back to heal. I wouldn't be able to make it through this vault alone. So after taking out the pale who chased me back, I headed back to the watch in search of a friend. Oh look, there's a familiar face. Hi. How's it going? Uh, what are you doing here? Um, I don't know. There was like this whole adventure thing. I like, I woke up, and then I got I found a trip through this portal, and then I I don't know how the fuck I got here. Well, have have you been here before? Have you been to the? This is my first time. You? Uh, stop by once or twice. There's, there's a couple of, like really high tier dungeons here that I've been actually looking for someone to help you with. All right. Well, then uh, I could uh, potentially help you out with that. Um, I'm a little bit shy on bullets, so I'm gonna have to go melee. That's okay. I prefer melee anyway. Ah. Uh, see, look at this. This is why we're friends. Hi. Hi. Hey, Chaotic. Hey, All right. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Cool. <laughs> How the fuck did you do that? We made our way into the halls, only to be ambushed by the pale. Uh, I got a sword scar on me. I might need a little bit of help. Here. Oh. I ran over a trap. Moving through the next corridor, we were greeted by a scorpion horde. And damn, were they strong. Oh, I, I'm done. I need help. I told you these things were tough. <laughs> tough? This is beyond tough. I'm trying to jump across the ledge as they got me up now. 
after killing the final scorpion, we claimed the essence bundle in order to move to the next room. This was just a puzzle room, so we cleared it quickly before moving on to our next challenge. I'm down here. After taking down the first of the pale they are waiting for us, we had to activate the mechanism, causing waves and waves of pale to attack us. Let's get ready to rumble! Dude, I'm already rumbling. <laughs> Hammer slow, but Hammer did job. I'm done. <laughs> nice job, Hammer. Oh, I'm down. Somebody get me up. There we go. Oh, the fire guys. That was the easiest wave yet. That should have been wave one. <laughs> <laughs> and we kept moving down the corridor and we noticed this one looked different. We knew we were in for something. This looks like a point of no return. <laughs> right? Oh. Uh. Oh, I hear it walking. Oh, no. Hi, giant. Hi. I'm sorry I killed your cousin. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh, what the... <laughs> Watch out for the laser beams! <laughs> <laughs> oh, revive! 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 Game! Revive! Run! I'm down. Norman's still up. Norman! Norman. We need you Norman. now! Norman! Norman. Buddy. <laughs> buddy! Norman, buddy, please! <laughs> oh, Norman's running over to me! Norman got unstuck! <laughs> Norman, save me! Oh, 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 I'm down again. I'm down again. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Like Norman. Oh, shit. No, I'm down again. I'm in the air. Oh, I'm down. <laughs> Log on my magic. Damage I'm doing. Broke my son. I have broken my cat. You're so warm and well, I guess. Um, that's our game plan here, Keanu. Don't die. Wait, wait! He's trapped us in the start zone with this fucking <laughs> coral. All of us. <laughs> it's working, we're doing. Let's go, Norman. Whack his ankles. Whack them. 
Oh, uh, hi, Puck. And is he now here to make fun of you for dying? <laughs> <laughs> Good scrub. If thou aim. <laughs> Earthquake. Earthquake. He's stomping. I'm down. No dying. Coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Norman, get me up. Norman. Thank you. Tornado. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I'm power just... attack, you're doing a power attack. Yeah, I need that attack to move. He's blocking my way to Okay, I'm running in with fire axe. Earthquake. Earthquake. Run, 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 run. Down, That's down, a dog. Down. He's dead. He's dead. No, I didn't see it. <laughs> no. <laughs> God, I... Oh. Thank you for watching and get Nightingale for yourself using the link in the description and make sure you like and subscribe. Good luck, Realm Walkers.